Hi guys, this is Travis from Scroll Saw Goodies. Welcome back to another episode. Last time we used a freeware program called Inkscape. Inkscape was a vector-based program that uh, we used to clean up a uh, pattern that we downloaded off the internet. We uh, resized it, cleaned it up a little bit, and got it ready for printing. Well, this time around, we're going to continue with Inkscape, and we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to be uh, uh, preparing a large pattern. A uh, pattern that is larger than your standard sheet of paper. Uh, you might want to print out large patterns if you want to do a large uh, fretwork portrait or if you're doing some sort of intarsia or lath art uh, you might want to have a large pattern so you have uh, something to line up all of your your cutout pieces onto. Uh, let's just go ahead and jump right in uh, as you can see, I have Inkscape open. Uh, it defaults to a brand new document. And the uh, very first thing we're going to have to do is uh, uh, prepare the uh, document size uh, to be whatever we're going to be printing at. So I'm going to come up to File, Document Properties. Let me pull this over so you can see it. Uh, it defaults to an A4. I'm in the US, so I want to print uh, 8.5 by 11, just kind of a standard sheet of paper and I'll just go on and close that up. Now I suppose we probably should find a uh, pattern that we want to work with. So I'm going to go over to Scroll Saw Village and in the pattern library in the animals section uh, here's a pattern of some chickadees uh, designed by one of our members Christina. She does fabulous work and uh, here we have uh, pictures of some chickadees. Now uh, there's an awful lot of detail in it uh, and I don't know, I, I think something like this will work really well as a uh, larger pattern. Uh, something maybe, uh, oh I don't know, uh, 11 by 14 maybe. Uh, something along those lines. So uh, so we're going to go ahead and enlarge this. So we have the uh, image here. I'm going to go ahead and click the image. It's going to pull a pop-up menu or a pop-up window. And that way you can see it full size and uh, it looks like she has some pretty nice clean lines and uh, I think this will work really well for us. So I'm going to right click, I'm going to save the image as, I'm going to just send it right to the desktop. So I'm going to save that as soon as my computer catches up and we're done downloading so I'm going to minimize this and if you remember last time we just came to file, import, we're going to find our uh, chickadee pattern that we saved to the desktop. So I'm going to double click desktop and right there is chickadees right here. And let me scooch this over so you can see the little preview over here. And that's the one I want so I'm going to click open. And right there is our chickadees pattern designed by Christina. Okay so let's go ahead and move this to the side so we can see our uh, work surface here and uh, if you remember right this is just a bitmap remember from last time this is just a bitmap we want to change it to a vector uh, so we have a little bit easier control over it so I'm just going to select the uh, picture I'm going to come up to object no, I'm sorry I'm going to go to path trace bitmap I'm going to keep all the settings just the way they are because they work just fine right out of the box I'm going to just click OK and in a couple of seconds it creates my vector format. I'm going to go ahead and close that and as you can see as I drag this over there's my copy my vector based copy and we don't we don't need the uh, the bitmap anymore so I'm going to just highlight that and hit delete and there is our bird pattern. Now if you remember light, right I like to work with um, a gray pattern with a black outline so let's just go ahead and do that so I'm going to just select the image I'm going to select my gray down here it creates a gray pattern and now I want to add a black outline so I'm going to go over to the black and I'm going to right click and it's going to pop up a little dialog box and I'm going to set the stroke and that creates a outline so let's zoom in I'll just kind of show you what that is real quick just kind of as review and as you can see it's a gray pattern with a black outline. This is the way I like to work mostly because it's easy to see the lines. Uh, also when you print in gray 
uh, you save uh, an awful lot of ink from your ink cartridge. Okay, so we went up to the pointer tool again, or the selector tool, and I have my pattern selected. I'm going to pull this off to the side a little bit, and we're going to resize this. And remember up here is where we do our resizing. Right now it's in pixels. We want to go back down to inches. And right now it's about 12 inches wide, about 14 inches tall. Uh, we're getting pretty close to where we want to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock the aspect ratio so we're not we change both the uh, horizontal uh, and the vertical axis at the same time. And uh, I want to work uh, 11 by 14. So let's just go over here, 11 inches wide. And that brings it to a little shy uh, or a little bit more of 12 inches tall. And that, I think that'll probably work pretty well for me. Let's give it a little bit of margin. So let's go 10 and a half, 10.5. And that'll shrink it down just a tish bit more. Okay, so now we have the pattern at the exact size we want. As you can see, it won't fit on our piece of paper. It's going to cut off the paper, or uh, cut off the image in uh, several of those areas. So what I like to do is I like to kind of use an old printer's um, uh, technique and use registration marks. Registration marks are kind of like... Uh, uh, it's just a mark that you line up and makes uh, lining up uh, really easy and it really reminds you of like a bullseye. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to the circle and I'm going to hold down the control button and what that does is it creates a perfect circle. You see how that is? Now if I didn't have the control button you could see I could create ovals more or less, but I don't want an oval, I want a circle, I want a perfect circle, that way things line up nice. So I'm just going to create a small little circle, just something like that. Let's go ahead and zoom in on that circle, so I grab my little zoom tool, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit, and uh, we don't really need the gray uh, background, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here to fill, and if I right click on that, uh, it gives you a pop-up dialog box, and I'm going to remove the fill because I want that to be transparent. And there we go. So now we have a circle with a black outline with no fill. What we're going to do is we're going to try to create like a bullseye or crosshairs. I guess crosshairs is probably a little bit more accurate. Uh, so I'm going to come over here to the uh, draw bezier curves and straight lines. Click that and what I'm going to do is I'm going to click once and as you can see I have this uh, line that comes out and if I hold down the control key you can see that it snaps to uh, 15 degree increments. What I want is just a straight up and down. I want, I want to create a 90 degree angle. So I'm just going to click again and you can see that I have a point here and a point here but it's acting like it wants to find another point. Well I don't want another point I just want the straight line. It's really easy to do, just hit return and there you go. You got a straight line. I have a pointer tool and I could put that in the center and uh, so now we have our vertical crosshair. What we want is a uh, horizontal crosshair as well. Well we could come back here to the uh, Bezier tool again and we could do the same thing or we could just select the one that we just created and hit uh, duplicate. Uh, so that would be control D and what that's going to do is create a copy of it for you. Okay so now you have your copy selected. If you click it again you'll see like these little curvy marks on the corners. That allows you to spin whatever object you have selected. I'm going to control Z that out just so that's just an undo function. So now we have our piece selected. We want to make it horizontal. Well, I'm going to hold down, I'm going to grab the little corner, the little curve corner arrows. I'm going to hold down the control key and what that does is, is again going to snap to 15 degree increments and I'm just going to put it completely horizontal. Okay so we, now we have our horizontal crosshair, we have our vertical crosshair and we have our uh, scope I guess you could call it. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to select the scope or the circle. I'm going to hold down the shift key. The shift key allows you to select multiple objects. So I'm going to hold down the shift key and I'm going to select the vertical, uh, vertical crosshair. And what we want to do is we want to center the vertical crosshair within that circle. And to do that, the way we do that is the align and distribute. And we kind of played around with this last time to get our, uh, our pattern centered in the page, if you remember. And you remember right down here it says relative to what? Well, last time we used relative to page. This time we're going to be doing relative to selections because we have two pieces selected and that's all we really want to be centering. So we go ahead and select the selection. I'm going to center on the vertical axis. You see how that popped over. I'm going to center on the horizontal axis and you can see how that popped over. And now those two pieces are completely um, uh, centered. Okay, let's do that again. So I'm going to grab the circle again. I'm going to grab this uh, my horizontal crosshair. And again, I'm going to do the... Uh, okay, so let's back up a little bit. I kind of goofed up. Uh, we want this group to be centered with this group. So we're going to select both of these. I'm just, I just grabbed a... Uh, clicked up here with my left mouse button and I drag and I grab like a little marquee and as you can see when I release it it selects both the center as well as the circle and I'm going to hold down the shift key and I'm going to select this other one once again click the center button and center button and looky there we got ourselves a crosshair okay right now these objects are independent of each other which means that I can take the circle, I can move it off to the side. Well, that's going to make things awfully difficult if we're going to be uh, uh, using these quite a bit. So I'm going to use Control Z to undo. That brings it back to where it was. And I'm going to do the marquee again. I'm going to select them both, and we're going to group them. So let's see if I can find the group button. There's a group button right up here. It says Group Selected Objects. What you do is you click that button, and what that does is uh, basically create, takes all three of those objects and creates one object. So now you can see I could grab that and treat it as one single object. Okay, I'm going to close the Align and Distribute uh, tool because we don't need that anymore. I'm going to zoom out, so I'm going to grab the uh, magnifying glass, hold down the Shift key, and zoom out a little bit. And we're going to go along those lines. Okay, so we got our crosshairs. Okay, so what we're going to have to do is uh, figure a way out to lay this thing out so that um, we'll be able to print this easily. And if I select that, you can see it's about 10 and a half inches wide by uh, just shy of 12 inches tall. Uh, you know what we could do? is we could basically what we'll be doing is uh, printing these in blocks so you could print that way and then set it up to print this way and then on the bottom once again and then print this way and what that's going to do is it's going to create four pieces of paper which you'll tape together after the fact. But I think we could do this in two pieces of paper and make our life a little bit easier. So I'm going to select the pattern, click it again, and I'm going to get the little arrow marks that allows me to spin it, if you remember. Uh, I'm going to hold down the control key as I grab this little corner piece, and as you can see, it moves over in 15 degree increments. And what we want to do is put this sideways there and now we should only have to print it twice we could uh, print it this way and then move it over and print it this way so that's not so bad so let's go ahead and prepare the pattern and put our little crosshairs in there so it'll make lining up a little bit easier 
I'm going to take the crosshairs and we're going to find a good spot, something that overlaps, and I think something right in there. Let's zoom in just so we can see what we're doing. See, that's a good spot right there, I think. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to create a copy of that. So if you hold down the control and you hit D for duplicate, uh, it duplicated that layer and now you have an additional crosshairs. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this thing up to the other end so we have something else to line up. And, oops. Oh, I think that looks pretty good right there. So let's grab our zoom tool. We're going to zoom back out. So hold down uh, the shift key and you can zoom out. And as you can see, we have our two crosshairs. We have one here and one down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all three of those objects by using a little box. And as you can see, you can see the little dotted lines around it. That means all three of those items are selected. Let's go ahead and group those. So we're going to group that selection. And now it's time to line it up on our piece of paper. So let's go ahead and zoom out again just so we have a little bit more room to see. We're going to come up here to Align and Distribute. It pops up our little dialog box and now we're going to be aligning a distribute relative to the page. So we want to select page and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to we're just kind of eyeball it first because we want this piece right there, make sure you have enough room for the margins. And what we want to do is center it uh, up and down. So what I'm going to do is center it on the horizontal axis. I'm going to push that button and it's just going to nudge it over a little bit. And all I'm going to do is come up here to file, print, print that object. And as soon as that object is done printing, I'm going to take this, I'm going to move this over just a tish. Make sure your crosshairs are in the image. And once again, we're going to center it on the horizontal axis. And then come up to File, Print. And now we'll have two pieces of paper with the pattern on it. And all you got to do is take those pieces of paper, take them up to a window, and line up the crosshairs, because they're, they're, they're going to overlap a little bit. Line up those crosshairs, tape them together, and you have an oversized printed pattern. So as easy as that, I probably uh, droned on a little bit longer than I should have, but uh, it really is an easy process and if you need to print a large pattern, uh, this is the way I would recommend it. Uh, the crosshairs really make it easy for you to line it up. Uh, you don't necessarily need the crosshairs because uh, you could just kind of uh, figure it out with the pattern itself, but I, I do find that the crosshairs do make life a little bit easier. Uh, and that's pretty much that. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, you can shoot me an email at scrollsawgoodies at gmail.com. You can leave a message on the blog at scrollsawgoodies.com. And I look forward to seeing you and seeing some of your work at the forums at scrollsawvillage.com. Until next time, Happy scrolling.